Yes, Madan, true. Amarindra, true. Thank you very much for joining once again. This has been such a relishable series of podcasts. And uh, we'll continue today. Would you like to lead us with prayers, Madan and true? Gora Guruganya Gana Go to Goloru Haram. Goranga Guru Chama Go Pyada Kopa Briksham. Kupala Gada Rati Dam Yatishing Hagora Go Vinda Deshi Kavaram Shatatam Namami. Utama Adama Kichuna Bachi La Jachi Hadile Kakola. Kahe premananda emona goranga ridoya dadi abola. Baja goranga kaha goranga. Laha goranga namare. Jajana goranga baje. Se hoyamara pranare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Yashaiva Padambu Jabhakti Labhya Prema Vidana Parama Pumartaha Tasmai Jagan Mangala Mangalaya Chaitanya Chandraya Namo Namaste Chaitanya Chandraya Namo Namaste. Chaitanya Chandraya Namo Namaste. Madhgavira Pigopala. Sri Kriyat Kripaya Judi. Tadaiva Sambhaya Pigva Rishi Yustat Priya Janaha. Oh, Gopal, please, you're famous as a cowherd boy. Please accept and maintain the cows in the form of our words. Please get the pleasure of drinking the milk from those cows and inspire others to do the same. Shri Krishna Krishna Chaitanya Sasanatana Rupaka Gopala Raghunatha Prabhraja Bahalava Pahimam Vancha Kopatarubhischa Kripa Sindhu Bhyehevacha Patitanam Bhavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shiva Sari Gora Bhakta Brinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Beautiful. Thank you very much. So, we have been discussing till now the Bhagavatam, the, the 31st chapter, and we have come till the second verse we discussed in two sessions. And the first verse also we discussed because it's almost only one session. So I thought we'll discuss the third verse and we'll do the link from the second verse thereafter. So, Vishajala Pyayad Vyala Rakshasad Varshamarutad Vaidintanalad Rishmayat Majad Vishwato Bhayad Actually, it's a wise singing, reciting this, reading this. Amarindra Prabhu, you can recite it. Yeah, I, I, I have a comment that I'm not going to be satisfied with this session today. I, I, I just won't be satisfying in my heart unless I hear Amarindra Prabhu sing yeah, this please. verse. Please, please. <laughs> Amarindra Prabhu, yeah. Vishajala <laughs> Vyalarakshasa Varishamaruta Vaidyutanala Vrishamayatmajan Vishwato Bhaya. Rishabhate Vayam Rakshita Moho. That's beautiful. Wonderful. 
So this quick intro. The previous verse stated that Krishna, neha kim vadha. You are so beautiful, and we are serving you out of love as your maid servants. You are the giver of benedictions, but why are you killing us? So that killing comes from separation. And now here, this verse is saying that this killing is contrary not just to your eternal nature, but is contrary to the way you have acted with us till now. You actually saved us from so many dangers. So then, those the very people whom you save from dangers, how can you kill them now? So here they give a list of various dangers that they faced, and here the gopis are using we in a collective sense. It's not necessarily they themselves, but the brajivasis in general. Even if it could be the gopas or it could be somebody else. So vishaja alapya yad is the poisoned waters that refers to generally is considered referred to kaliya, and then. There are different Vyala Rakshasad, Varshama Arutad. So Vyala is generally the snakes so that refers to Aghasur. Varshama Arutad, Vidintanala. This is taking three lines, the Gaur and, and three words, the Gaur the Lila, where Krishna protector from Indra is mentioned. And Vrishmayatmajad, Vishwato Bhayad. So generally this Vrish Arishtasur and Mayadana. It's interesting that these two demons are not yet come. They are going to come in the future, and the gopis are referring to that. This on the yogi, yog, they are also yoginis in devotion. They say this Vishwato Bhayad. These are they are feared by the entire universe, but you protected us from the Rishabhate Vayam, Rishabho powerful one. You protected us us from the Rakshita Mohu. Time and time again, you have protected us. So how can you kill us now? So the, in the previous verse, we discussed elaborately about how uh, Krishna has the separation from Krishna and the intensification of devotion and separation from Krishna is is actually the ex highest is like the perfection of the God of Vishnuvas. But at the same time, it it does appear like agony, and it is in this state of agony in separation from Krishna that the, the gopis are pouring out their heart, beseeching Krishna to come. So Krishna, don't kill us. Please come back. That's the underlying mood. Yes, you can continue. Mm -hmm. Madhavan, so you'd like to speak, start with something? Yeah, one of the first things that, that's interesting about this verse, the gopis here, they're uh, they're addressing Krishna that that you saved us, as you pointed out in a plural way, from so many different demons. But the gopis were not present when Agasura was there. The gopis were not present when, when, um, when uh, 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 was it, uh, Vatsasura was there. Mm -hmm. And both of them are being mentioned here. Why are they mentioning this? And, and there's an interesting point uh, Jiva Goswami makes in, in his uh, commentary. He says that, that he points out that the gopis here are speaking in two ways, both individually and collectively. And so they're they're indicating that that collectively we're part we're we're part of the group, we're part of the bridge bosses. You saved us, meaning the all the bridge bosses, when you killed Agasura. Huh? But they're also speaking in, in, in an individual way. They're indicating in an individual way that the that Krishna he saved the cowherd boys as individual persons. So I I this is to me is a very important principle in spiritual life that. There's both a collective sense and an individual sense, and that's a very, very important thing. I, I've often commented, I won't go into it elaborately here, but here in Jagannath Puri, we see in a collective sense, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was going to Rathayatra, he was going to the Jagannath Mandir, but it, he also functioned in a more individual sense in the Gambira with just a few devotees. And this is an expression coming from the gopis. This is very important. We, we want to identify with the group in one sense. We want to support the organized religion of, of the Jagannath Mandir and that. But at the same time, we, Krishna, you're, you're an individual and you're treating us all as individuals. That, that's a very broad point that I see right away in the verse. There's a lot of other particular points. Yes, so that sense of... Uh identifying with the whole while also maintaining one's own identity. And that in one sense is Achinta Bheda Bhed. So 
sometimes uh, sometimes it's said that the eastern culture is more collectivist and western culture is more individualist and that is true but then it's not that collectivism is always good and individualism always bad it is just that excess becomes a problem so we do need that harmony between the two i think the harmony comes when the overall purpose of both is the same the group is serving krishna and the individual is serving krishna so sometimes i like like i mean we could I just i don't want to prolong the point but it's like in sports there are individual sports and there is team sports so in one sense bhakti is like a team sports but it's not just a team sport i won't go so far as to say it's like an individual sport but it's like a team sport in which each of us also has our individual relationship with krishna so that individual aspect is also very much there so it's a beautiful point amarendra you want to add something on this or you take another point yeah actually my mind is uh, still at the second verse so maybe just yes, a, a, a quick <laughs> yes, yes. A, a quick maybe a quick point on the second verse and do you want me to share the screen or something or it will definitely help provoje it will definitely help so in the second verse um very interesting that uh, the word suratha nath te ashul kadasika so we have discussed the other sections but i i would maybe want to uh, for a few minutes just speak on that line the third line hmm. actually our acharyas have given three meanings to that section so they say the word first of all the word suratha nath from from a most submissive point nath refers to the lord and surata refers to madhurya prem or the conjugal mood so mm-hmm. you are the lord of conjugal mood and we are your ashulka dasika we are your unpaid maid servants this is the general understanding which is true but then the meaning goes a little more intense with the second uh, understanding so uh, from the one so we we mentioned from the dakshinya perspective the more submissive perspective in the second meaning it's uh, the vammi perspective the more uh, um leftist mood there the word natha actually means to torture in sanskrit mm. and the word surata can be broken very beautifully su means sushtu which means very nice and rata means absorption so sushtu ratanam jananam shila sanatan goswami has written this in his brihat vaishnav toshini that natha means to destroy or to attack or to torture and su means very nice and rata means absorbed so krishna you are expert at torturing those who are very absorbed in saintly activities like look at the lotus it is just absorbed in rasa in the pond it doesn't interfere with anybody's business the the lotus is absorbed in the pool of rasa rasa meaning water rasa meaning devotion <laughs> both so the lotus there is absorbed and minding its own business surata it is very sweetly absorbed in its own thing but torture you are stealing from it and we are also like that surata we are very deeply absorbed in love to your lotus feet and nata you are torturing us so that's the second meaning so first meaning is you are the lord of madhurya prem and we are your unpaid maid servants this is the contrast in your position and my position but in the vamya or in the leftist camp we are your unpaid maid servants that's true but who are you we are very deeply attached and absorbed in love and you torture those who are absorbed in love to you look at all the examples all those who sold themselves to you you torture them the most akinchani kritya padashritam ya karoti bhikshum pathige hainam as shri pad bilva mangala thakur has said those who come to you saying that my lord we surrender to you you take more from them than others so surat those who are actually very deeply absorbed in devotion you know how to torture them so this is the leftist mood now it gets even more intense in the third interpretation grammatically now we see the word natha now natha is actually lord natha means lord like badrinath ramnath dwarakanath right vrajanath gopinath 
Natha means Lord. But however, poetically and grammatically, when we see the next word as te, Natha te is a word in itself in Sanskrit. Like, for example, when we say uh, seva te, that means he is serving. Labhate, he is gaining. Manyate, he is considering. Vandate, he is praying. Similarly, there is a verb, nathate. And what does that mean? That means to beg in Sanskrit. So if you take the word natha separately, that means Lord. But when you pull it together with te, that means to beg. So interestingly, the flow of thought is it starts with the word drisha. Drisha means with the eye. You, Krishna, you begged us through your glance that you want to meet us. <laughs> drisha, with your glance, surata, to meet, natate, you begged. And therefore, we being your unpaid maidservants, we came. Just because you, with your glance, you begged that you want to meet. We didn't want to meet. We just wanted to fulfill what you wanted. So you, natate, you begged, drisha, with your glance to meet us. And therefore, we left our family and we came because we are your Ashulka Dasika. We are your uh, unpaid maid servants. And you left us. Isn't this murder where we, we don't want it? We came just to fulfill what you wanted. It's like someone who's hungry for food and we come all the way to give him the food. And that person is the one who backstabs. But at the same time, with all these three interpretations holding true, there's one more understanding. Now, if we see Ashulka Dasika, now the word Dasika, they could have said Dasi or Dasya in the, in the plural sense, which means we are servants. Why say Dasika? In Sanskrit, when the syllable Ka is added, it heightens the effect with a tender hearted feeling. For example, when you have to say Gopi, that means a cowherd girl. But when you say Gopi Ka, that means a tender hearted cowherd girl. When you say Radha, that's enough to say it's Sri Radha. But then you add Radhika, the syllable ka there, to say that, oh, that soft-hearted Radha. Similarly, we can say Amba. Amba means mother in Sanskrit. But then when you say soft-hearted mother, Ambika. Mm. So similarly, Dasi, who are you? You torture the innocent. And who are we? We are not just servants. We are tender-hearted <laughs> maidservants. And at the same time, the word, it's very interesting. They have placed it poetically so nicely that suratanata te, and now there, there's a, uh, there's a mix. With the te hides the a shulka dasika. So it's almost sung as shulka dasika, right? Mm. So poetically, you can take the meaning as ashulka or you can take it as shulka, which means one meaning is you are the torturer and we are your unpaid maidservants. Or another meaning is exact opposite. You are torturer and we are your paid maidservants. And what are we, what are we supposed to be paid with? Drisha, your glance. We became your servants on the pay that you will glance on us. And imagine someone who works hard all day and is promised $100,000 that year. And then he's working so hard. And then when it's time to pay, the person says, forget it. I'm not going to pay you anything. So the gopis are saying, we are not unpaid maidservants. We are paid maidservants. Shulka dasika. And what's our pay? Drisha, your glance. And the only thing that we were promised, we are not being offered on the payday. So isn't this murder, Krishna? So these were some thoughts on the second verse. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. Shulka and Ashulka, both meanings work out to give the same essential conclusion, but in different ways. I think in Bhagavad Gita there is the word aparyaptam tadasmakam balam bhima abhirakshitam. So that something similar comes up. He uses the word paryaptam and aparyaptam. So Duridhana is speaking and he is saying that. Uh, our forces are immeasurable. A paryapta means immeasurable. And he's saying that, oh, we have 11. The implication is we have 11 nakshahuni, far greater than you. Far greater than them. So we are, we are sure to win. But then, a paryaptam can also mean that, oh, no, no, no. Our forces are not sufficient. So, and the idea is that, is it a mistake? It could be a mistake from his side, a slip of tongue. But it's also explained that he said, 
we are we are sufficient because we have such forces and we have bhishma as the commander but aparyaptam that we we have bhishma as a commander but he is old now he is weak so all of you other forces you also others you also have to support you also have to join in so i need to survey next verse is i need to survey you tha bhagam avastita where all of you situated all of you should also fight him and support bhishma but of course that's a more uh, martial context this is an entirely devotional context <laughs> it's amazing how you it requires incredible level of uh, expertise in words to actually have the opposite meaning of a word lead to the same conclusion of the sentence otherwise it just becomes completely opposite so yeah. true yeah. even even the word varada is very interestingly placed varada nignato na iha kim vada now the word varada is very famous in south india as varada raj varam dadati now in sanskrit whenever the syllable da comes at the end it means dadati to give to bestow mm. like mother yashoda gives fame to krishna therefore yasha dadati she can give yasha even to the all famous therefore she is yashoda kirti da similarly um, sharada gnanada harshada names for uh, mother saraswati she who can give knowledge she who can give um, you know happiness so da for male and da for female so here they use the word vara da vara means boon and da means the one who can bestow so you can bestow the boons in the submissive mood uh, of chandravali and others that you can fulfill all our desires and all our boons please that's one but in sanskrit the syllable da which means to benedict it also means avakhandanam which means to destroy <laughs> so he who can bestow the best boons is now turning out to be the greatest destroyer of boons what a wonderful boon to be together in brindavan so yeah so so the same syllable which means to bestow the boon varam dadati iti um it also means varam avakhandanam which means to destroy the best boon we are here you are here it's the full moon night of sharad purnima brinda devi has made the best arrangement it's the best benefact you know benedicting moon <laughs> it's the best benedicting atmosphere but because you are varada you are expert in destroying boons we don't even want to talk to you you are a murderer so that's another perspective <laughs> sorry for for speaking so much i i feel very embarrassed please forgive me beautiful Yes, Padan. We want to elaborate something. This is. I, I this this whole uh, presentation that that Amarendra Prabhu is very wonderfully making. Uh, sometimes devotees become maybe a little disturbed by it. They think, well, well, Prabhupada translated one way. Of course, we can also point out if, if you look at the Bayam Dutiya Benivesa Tashat verse, for example, from the eleventh canto of the Bhagavatam. I think there's at least three, maybe four, practically completely different translations that Shri Prabhupada gave. So I, I, another uh, reflection on what Amarendra Prabhu was saying in the forty-seventh uh, chapter, the tenth canto, it says, "Yasam iti arpita manaha," that uh, the gopis, their minds were applied to Krishna. And Jiva Goswami in Vaishnav Toshini says that it means manasa swatantriyana, that their swatantra, their manasa swatantra, their minds were independent, and that's a really interesting point. that sometimes we we we're dependent on on a particular way that shri lopraba gave something we think it only has there's only one meaning but there's so many different meanings and things and the gopis they're they're independent thinkers according to jiva goswami and in that as it is described in that chapter the bhagavatam their independent thinking means they don't think like everybody else who are thinking for their own benefit we're thinking you know religion means like that for what can i get out of it how can i get purified how can i get this thing or that thing but the independent thinking of the gopis is that they're they're independent of those desires they just want to please krishna so it, it it's a very very high thing it's a very subtle thing because we're hearing the gopis understanding how to please krishna in a way that that uh we don't find what it, throughout the world and all the temples and mosques and synagogues krishna is glorified as god and he and he's worshiped in so many ways but in the bhagavatam the gopis are calling him a murderer 
And, and even for devotees, it's a very difficult thing to get their head around. But they're independent thinkers. Independent thinkers. That's beautiful. So, it's almost like last time we discussed in Lao, a person can call others strongly, but that doesn't contaminate, that doesn't weaken the Lao. That only actually expresses the Lao, how great the Lao is that can use such words. For most of us, we need to learn reverence and then we can come to intimacy. So true. So, Actually, my yeah. mind also goes to one more verse of the Chaitanya Charitamrit Prabhuji. This is actually uh, Mahaprabhu speaking to Sanatan Goswami. Krishna Tulya Bhagavata Vibhu Sarvashray Prati Shloke Prati Akshare Nana Arthekai Srimad Bhagavatam is as great as Krishna the Supreme Lord and shelter of everything. In each and every verse of Srimad Bhagavatam and each and every syllable, there are various meanings. This is Mahaprabhu, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu speaking, that prati shloke, every verse, prati akshare, every syllable practically, nana arthakai, they have different multifarious meanings. So, um, and Krishna Tulya Bhagavad Vibhu Sarvasha, Srimad Bhagavatam is as big and as unlimited um, qualitatively and quantitatively as Krishna and therefore worthy of uh, giving shelter to everyone. So um, mm -hmm. this is in, in, in line with Sripad Madhavanand Prabhu's statement that there, um, every syllable and every verse can have so many layers of meaning. And he quoted the Bhayam Dvitiya Bhineveshi Tasyat verse from the 11th canto having multiple meanings. And here also Gopi is having um, intertwining multiple and, and, and different meanings with the same arrangement of syllables. So it's beautiful like that. Mm -hmm. It's just um, in line with Mahaprabhu's statement that there are, and this is by the way, Nimai Pandit speaking, <laughs> who can, who is so scholarly, linguistically, devotionally, and of course, as the Supreme Lord, that he knows what he's saying. To Sanatan Goswami, that too, one of the leading commentators on the Bhagavatam. Yeah. So the gopis are so scholarly. Atmaram verse chapter, isn't it? The Atmaram verse explained yeah. That's chapter. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. Prati Akshare. Prati, prati, okay, prati Akshare. You know, it's almost, uh, I think Madhvacharya has said that, uh, maybe I mentioned that the Vishnu Sahasranam, each name has a thousand meanings. And I think he gave the thousand meanings only for the first two, three names. But it's fascinating how many meanings could be there. So thousand to thousand. You already have so much nectar to churn. Mm -hmm. You want to link this to the next verse now? Madhavan, do you want to comment something otherwise? I, I would like to go to the third verse. I'm happy with that. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm really struck just by the, the first uh, couple syllables in this verse, visa jala, that the, the poisonous water. And I hear they're, they're speaking about Kaliya. And uh, Kaliya, Damana, Leela, they're indicating that, Krishna, you, you saved us from the demon Kaliya. And this word's jala, visa jala, are significant. It, it reminds me of Kavi Karnapur and his Ananda Vrindavan Champu. He says there that uh, Yamunaya Hridroga, that Kaliya was a heart disease, <laughs> Hridroga in the Jamuna. And the Jamuna, what is the Jamuna? In Harivangsa Purana, it, it describes it Shiva Jalasaya, right? the same word Jala. That Shiva Jalasaya, that the Jamuna is that thing which gives life to Braj. So again, indicating right away in this verse, the gopis, as Jiva Goswami indicates, uh, they're saying two things. They're saying something collective, and they're saying something individual. And in a collective way, Bisha Jala, that, that this Jamuna, this Jamuna, which is Chiva Jalasaya, according to, to Harivangsa Purana, it's life of all of us. Water is life. And Keshi, excuse me, Kaliya came and he poisoned that. And, and so you saved us from that. So they indicate something both collective and individual. And in a collective way, I, I think a nice example of that is grass. In America, people like to grow lawns. <laughs> in other places in the world, they, they like to grow vegetables. In America, they grow lawns. And the lawn looks like one thing. It, it looks like one entity. But if you go and look closely, you'll see that each individual blade of grass is different from all the other blades of grass. Some of them are a little diseased.
trees, some of them are eaten by insects, some of them are strong and beautiful. And collectively and individually, so we help the collective sense when we become strong as individuals. So the gopis, they're independent thinkers. And Srila Prabhupada also, in his letter, famous letter he wrote to Karandar Prabhu, who at that time was like, Karandar was like the leader in ISKCON, he was the main GBC. Prabhupada said the purpose of the Krishna conscious movement is to create independent thinkers. And what does that mean? It doesn't mean that, that we, 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 means we should learn to think the way Srila Prabhupada taught us. We should learn to think through Shastra in a kind of collective way, as the gopis are doing here, they're indicating Bishajala in a collective way, but also as individuals. Because as individuals, we make the whole, the collective strong when we're strong as individuals. But when we give up the, the sense of individualism, then, and, and we just, we call that merging. Mm -hmm. And that's detrimental. That's something which the Gaudi Vaishnavas don't want. It's something that Krishna doesn't want. So that's just my thoughts on the first couple of syllables of the verse. Bisha Jala. Thank you, Alandru. Yeah. My, uh, my mind is again stunned with the poetic genius of the gopis here. Um, keeping the same system intact of the first syllable and the seventh syllable being the same. Starts off with V as in Visha, and then the seventh syllable is Vyala. Again, it's a V. And the second line is Varsha, starting with a V. And after the pause, it's Vaidyutanalad, again with a V. In the third line, it's again starting with a V, Vrishamayatmaja. Then after the pause, the seventh syllable is Vishvatobhayat. Again, it's a V. And then in the last line, starts with an R, Rushabhate Vayam. And after that phrase, Rakshita Muhu, again, it's an R. And uh, not just the first and the seventh syllable, we see that even the second syllable throughout is consistent. Visha, Jalapya Yad, Vyala Rakshasad, Varusha, Marutat, Vaidyutanalad, Vrusha, Mayatma Chad, Vishwato Vhayad, Risha. So the Sha has been used as the second syllable in all the four lines. Um, as far as poetry is concerned. And also, um, from a grammatical perspective, the first word that they have used is, it's phenomenal genius, phenomenal genius. In, in Sanskrit, you, you call them as samas or compounds, when words are put together in a, in a certain construct. So actually, if you see the word visha means poison, and the word jala means water. So if you technically just translate that, that'll translate as poison water, and it doesn't make any sense. So the actual phrase is Visha Mishrita Jalam, which means that water which is mixed with poison. Then it makes sense, poisonous water. Mm -hmm. But if you just put poison water, it doesn't make much sense, Visha and Jala. So actually the term is Visha Mishrita Jalam, which means that water which is mixed with poison. However, in Sanskrit, this is called as a Madhyama Pada Lopi Samas, which means when three words come together in a certain way, the middle term disappears and the first and third term are used together. <laughs> like the three words are Visha, which means poison, Mishrita, which means to be mixed with, and Jalam means water. So there are three words actually, Visha, Mishrita, Jalam. But they are using this as a Madhya Pada Lopi Samas where three words come together and the middle word disappears. And what remains is only the first and the third word, and then they are put together. <laughs> so Visha Mishrita Jala, Mishrita is gone. So it comes together as Visha Jala. So even in their transcendental separation, it's, um, I would like to say that where there is Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojita Janayat Yasu Vairagyam Jnanam Yacha Ahitukam, where there is an explosion of divine ecstatic love, all transcendental knowledge takes shelter there. So it's not that the gopis are sitting there how to fit the meter and how to sing it linguistically and poetically um, accurate. They are just singing. It's an outburst of their devotion. And all grammatical rules are aligning to serve their lotus feet. So... <laughs> And one more thing that I am really fascinated by is how they are putting the word Rakshasa and Rakshita together in the same verse, because they have almost uh, opposite meanings. 
Now the word rakshita means to be protected by someone. And the word rakshasa, which means a cannibal, <laughs> comes uh, according to the Sanskrit term, it means vayam rakshamaha. Those who think that I can protect myself, they are called rakshasas in Shastra. <laughs> vayam rakshamaha. Who protects me? Oh, we can protect ourselves. This mentality is considered to be wicked or uh, rakshasa, demoniac. Although it also means to be a cannibal and to eat human flesh. So the gopis are saying, you were able to destroy those. You were able to destroy those who had this notion or this understanding that we can protect ourselves. But on the other hand, we who are convinced that only you can protect us, you're not ready to protect us. <laughs> You are ready to uplift those um, demoniac rakshasas who are convinced that they can protect themselves. But on the other hand, we as the gopis, uh, we are convinced we can protect ourselves. We depend on you for protection. But you are not ready to protect us. You are ready to uplift all those demons, all the agasurs and bakasurs, but you are not ready to uplift us. So this contrast is what uh, is very interesting. Shripad Madhavananda Prabhu, would you like to correct and or no. um, improve? <laughs> Hare Krishna. I, 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 again, I, I, in this verse, I, 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 I'm, I'm very interested in this subject about, we, we call it living alone in the crowd, and the dynamic of uh, being both having a collective consciousness and an individual consciousness. And this verse is really, really good for that. So here we see that the gopis are referring to Kaliya. And Kaliya is mentioned in many different ways by our acharyas that that pastime is given a little differently in, in different uh, literatures of our, of our previous acharyas. I, I'm remembering the, the, the words that Balaram spoke to Krishna in the Brihad Bhagavatamrita, which is a very beautiful description of the Kaliya Dhamana Leela. He says, Murchitan mitatuliyam tan sarvam drishyati yantritaha sa gudgada sonit chohai krishnam sambodhiso bravit. When he saw that everybody was laying there on the ground as though they were going to die uh -huh. because this, this terrible poison, this bisha jala, was troubling everyone in, in, in Vrindavan, then Balaram became very sorrowful. Balaram is Adi Guru. Mm -hmm. And when Gurudev sees that the devotees are suffering and they're expressing that suffering, as you were as you were just saying, Amarinder Prabhu, it's not that they're uh, taking shelter themselves, their own strength, but they're taking shelter of Krishna. And then at that time, Gurudev intercedes and he calls out to Krishna. So then Balaram at that point, he calls out to Krishna. Baladev Balaram, he told Krishna, he used to say, Eti na parshada. These aren't your parshadas who are living with you in Vaikuntha. Navanaraste, huh? that these aren't the, the monkeys who are living with you when you were Lord Ramachandra, who were living in the forest, hmm? Nacha Yadava, these aren't the members of the Yadu dynasty. Goloka Loka, hmm? these are, are, are the residents of, of Goloka Vrindavan. And Bhavat Eka Jivana, hmm? they only have one life, Eka Jivana, and that one life is you. And now, Nashantya Sakya Bhagavan Mayavitum, they're all dying. Because they're seeing you in the coils of Kaliya. They're all going to die. Huh? So this is also the Bisha Jala. That, that Jala is the, the life water of everything. And what is that life water? In another sense, it's Krishna. And when the gopis are seeing that Krishna, the gopis and all the residents of Vrindavan are seeing that Krishna is in the coils of uh, Kaliya, then they're lamenting and they're going to die. And Balaram, at that point, he speaks up, just as Gurudev, when he, he may not intercede on behalf of the disciple, until he, until he sees that the disciple has this attitude, I'm dying, my head is on fire, please help me, please help me. 
And then at that time, Gurudev intercedes, Balaram intercedes, and he speaks like this to Krishna. Then he goes on to say, Pranayati Yukta Navapanti Havat Tavadinotam Karuna Tvajaitam Krishnanyata Goshta Janayaka Bhando Gantasi Shokam Mridula Svabhavaha. Balaram told him that Krishna, huh? You're, you're Karuna Moi, you're very, very kind. You're a very kind person. Please, you do something. Because if you don't do something, these devotees, Pranay Vyukta, they're, they're going to die. They're going to become separated from their life heirs. Do something before that happens. Because if you don't do that, then you're going to suffer. Which again reminds me also of the statements of the gopis. That the gopis, they're speaking like this to Krishna, that... Uh, you should give us your drisha, your glance. Why? Huh? Because uh, that ultimately is going to give pleasure to you. And the gopis, they're, they're independent thinkers in the sense that, that they're not thinking like everybody else. The gopis are thinking, how can we please you, Krishna? That's all that we want. So similarly, Balaram is telling Krishna, if you don't do something right now, if you don't save them from Kaliya, then this is going to break your heart. Everybody in Braj is worried about Krishna, whereas the religionists in the world, they're worried about themselves. And that's why in the end of the Gita, Krishna says, Sarva Dharma Paritjaga. He doesn't say Sarva Papa Paritjaga. He doesn't say give up sin. He says give up religion, because your Dharma means your particular Dharma, your desires, and just Mame come Saranam, brother. You take shelter of me. Or as my Guru Maharaj commented, the word Braja there, means in the mood of Braj. And that, he said, was the end of the Bhagavad Gita. When Krishna remembered Braj then, he couldn't speak anymore, and basically Bhagavad Gita was finished at that point. So we should learn to be independent thinkers, like the gopis are independent thinkers. Not that we're letting everybody else tell us how to think. We're not following what the mass of people think. But as individuals, we're, think we're thinking, how can we please Krishna? What is Krishna's desire? So that's my thought on those things. Chaitanya Charmbo, are you still there? I think he's, uh, he's I think, about to come. So. Okay. I'm also um, um, very, very positively um, attracted to this thought that the gopis could have put any asura or any rakshasa in any order. But they start off with Kaliya. It's ah. very interesting. Uh, has it, what do you think, Prabhuji? Is it something to do with Purvarag? Is it the, is it the, uh, the, the heart of the gopis? They somehow have a soft corner for Kaliya because he was the stage of Krishna's dancing. And that dancing uh, was during the time of their first meet with Krishna. Kali is very, there's two leelas which are very special for the bridge bosses in Braj. One is Govardhan Dharna leela, and the other is Kali Dhamana leela. Last time you mentioned about Purvarag is important because this is the first time that the gopis are all standing and they can just look at Krishna to their heart's delight. <laughs> so beautiful. So beautiful. I heard one um, senior Vaishnav say uh, in a very interesting way, he said that um, Krishna teaches through Kaliya a very important lesson for Vaishnavas. And what is that lesson? He says that however sinful one is, as sinful as Kaliya, if one has one's body stamped with the footprint of Krishna's lotus feet, then the Garuda of death or rebirth cannot touch us. So then I was interested to know what is that stamp? And he said, Tilak. He said, we are like Kaliya. And if we can have Tilak markings all over our body, which represents the lotus footprint of the Supreme Lord, it's like Krishna dancing on the Kaliya of our body. Oh, then we will be protected. <laughs> we will be protected by the Garuda influence. Of course, Garuda is a great Vaishnav, but he's also the enemy for Kaliya. So oh. we, we could say that uh, the Kaliya who fears Garuda of punishment will be saved if he imprints his body with Tilak. So it was a very beautiful practical point from the Kaliya. I had never thought of it like that. Yeah, that's wonderful. It reminds me of, of your Guru Maharaj, of Radha Govinda Maharaj. 
I, I, some years ago, I was asked to speak about Kali Adam and Alila, the Govardhan retreat. And I was struggling doing the best I can, speaking from a perspective based on the foundation of what you know, Thakur says about that pastime, which is a whole other topic. But uh, I, I'd gone through and I was satisfied with so many different points, but there was one point that I wasn't satisfied with. And that's how it, we know in the third canto, there's that verse that uh, Aho Bakiyam, that begins Aho Bakiyam, that, that how merciful you are, Krishna, because the older uh, sister of Baka, of Bakasura, uh, Putana, she, you, you uh, delivered her. And in the same way, it's described how merciful Krishna is, that he's merciful to Kaliya. And I, I just wasn't satisfied. How is he merciful to Kali? He drives him out. He makes him leave Vrindavan. How is that mercy? If you tell someone, get out of here, go away, and especially leave Vrindavan, how is that mercy? And Bhaktivinoda Thakur comments, he says that uh, because Kali, although he got so much mercy from Krishna, he didn't take shelter of any of the bridge bosses, therefore he had to leave. Okay, that's, that's there. But still... Kali got so much mercy. Krishna was putting his feet on his head. And now this is mercy that, that he's driving him away. And then that, that last day, I was going for a walk by Govardhan Hill by myself. I was chanting. I was meditating on this. And an answer came to my mind, which I spoke that morning before the devotees. And somehow they were all satisfied with our explanation. But I wanted to support it. So I, I didn't. It was just my own conjecture. So it's said in Shastra that you should go to a Brahmin, some exalted Vaishnava, to support something. So I, I went to Srila Radha Govinda Maharaj. And I said, Maharaj, I presented the whole dilemma to him. How can we say that Kaliya is a recipient of Krishna's mercy when Krishna drove him out of Braj? And uh, <laughs> Maharaj gave such a, he gave the exact same answer which I gave. Without me, without me stating that answer, I was very, very satisfied. Like Krishna, okay, uh, it, it, it's uh, confirmed now. And he says that he told me that uh, when Krishna drove Kaliya out, where did Kaliya go to? Kaliya went to uh, Ramanaka Dweep, and going to Ramanaka Dweep means what? He, he's a homeboy. We have that saying in America that that's where he's from. And he goes back and there's going to be all the snakes and things, the creatures there. So when he goes there, what's naturally going to happen? He said, Kali, you've been gone for several yugas now. Where, where have you been? What's been going on? And what's Kali going to do? Naturally, he's going to say, sit down. I've got a story to tell you. There's a place called Vrindavan. And there's this wonderful boy named Krishna. And he's going to speak this, this Krishna Kata. And all the snakes are going to come. And what occurred to us also is who goes to, to Ramanaka Dweep every day for lunch. It's kind of like his fast food program. That's Garuda. So Garuda is going to go there also. He's going to see a big crowd of snakes all gathered around, and he's naturally going to be curious what's going on. And he's going to find Kali there is speaking Krishna Kata. And Garuda being a devotee, he's also going to become very attractive. Naturally, it's not said, but we can. it's, it's logical surmise to follow this way. Guru is also going to sit down and he's going to take part in the Krishna Kata. And that's very interesting because Garuda is the ultimate enemy of the snakes. And so the, the purport is that Krishna Kata brings everyone together. It'll even bring the snakes together with Garuda. And, and uh, our point, which uh, Radha Govinda confirmed, was that it's his mercy on Kaliya because, in effect, he's telling him, now you leave, you go and preach. Just as Srila Prabhupada, he gave Vrindavan to all of his Western disciples, and he brought them there, and he, and he took them on Parikrama, and he spoke Krishna Kata to them at the Radhadamadar Temple and other places. And then he said, now go away. Now get out of here. In the same way Krishna told Kaliya to leave, you go and you preach. And in that preaching, we're always with Krishna. And in fact, in a deeper way, we're with Krishna because we're fulfilling Krishna's desire. It's like the gopis are independent thinkers meaning that they want to think of Krishna's desire. Krishna Kunda here is here with me, my wife, and she's jumping up and down. She has something she just no, wants she's, to say. She's not first to me exactly, but just something what simple. What is it, Krishna? I just wanted to add something simple, because um, this question came up by exactly Kaliya Damanalila that the gopis are remembering or bringing up by uh, using the phrase Vishajala. And um, 
also you mentioned earlier why why do they mention what sasura they weren't there because it's both mm -hmm. individual and collective prayers and i was thinking about um, the part of the bhagavatam where lord brahma takes all the demigods with him to go and beg the lord mm -hmm. to come because uh, collective prayers have more power and i was thinking the gopis are invoking kali adam and Lila because all the bases were there so mm -hmm. they are kind of bringing on all the rasas and all the beach bases. That's, that's in other matters. words, maybe the gopis are kind of saying that, that look, Krishna, you may not listen to us. <laughs> you just saved everybody. You, you didn't just save us, you saved everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, beautiful. I also feel there is some, uh, um, there's some uh, favoritism that Krishna has towards Kaliya. Yeah. Because uh, it's interesting that Kali has darkened complexion, and therefore wow. he's Krishna. And Krishna is all attractive, and therefore he's Krishna. Because the word Krishna in Sanskrit can mean dark complexion, it can also mean the all attractive Lord. Vilokya dushitan Krishnam Krishna Krishna Hina Vibhu. Srila Shukdev Goswami says that the, the dark snake was living in the dark waters. And to free the dark waters of Yamuna from the dark snake, the dark complexion Lord jumped in. The word Krishna has come thrice in that same verse. So Krishna has some favoritism there because both are Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> the snake is also Krishna because of dark complexion and Krishna is Krishna because he is all attractive. But apart from that, both of them also have one common like similarity. What is that? <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of uh, going towards Parakya Bhavna. Uh, Kaliya, he is actually living in the house of another man with his wife. Because Krishna, <laughs> Krishna, because Yamuna as Kalindi is the wife of Krishna. And Kaliya is living in the house of Krishna with his wife, which is Yamuna. So if Krishna kills Kaliya for this, this fault, then the Parakya Bhav of Braj will tumble to ashes. Because you are killing someone who is a dark complexion paramour. Kali is a dark complexion paramour because he is living in the house of Krishna, associating with Krishna's wife, who is Yamuna. So then, uh, you know, you can't. Apani na kaila dharma shikhai na jai, eito shiddanta gite bhagavata gai. That Krishna cannot speak about parakya bhav, parakya bhave jaha brajete prachar. If he chastises Kaliya. So he has to give special favor and special position to Kaliya. So that, that's like the spring point, the jumping point for Paraki above and all the beautiful Brajalilas. Just a thought. <laughs> amazing. It's amazing that see, we try to remember the various pastimes of Krishna, but it's not on many occasions that we have devotees remembering other pastimes in which they may or may not be a part of. Not on many occasions. It is there. I'm saying when it is there, it is quite special. We have Bhishma in the first canto remembering the gopis in, in uh, Vrindavan, mad in separation from Krishna. So this interconnectedness of Krishna Lila is, is it actually opens a whole new dimension of fascinating contemplation. So, thank you for that. Isha Jala Mm -hmm. no, to go Kaliya. to the next one? Yeah. Kaliya. Yes. Mm -hmm. Want to go to Vyala Rakshasad or have something more to say about? I'm sure you have a lot more about Kaliya. You could have a whole past class on Kaliya itself, but at this point. Sure, we could move to Vyala Rakshasad. Shripad Madhavananda <laughs> Prabhu, do you wanna do you wanna start off with Vyala Rakshasad? Maybe Agasur or Yeah, Agasur is a very interesting personality also. I I, I like uh Whenever we speak about the demons, I like very much to meditate on Bhaktivinoda Thakur's presentation in Chaitanya Sikshamrita and in um, uh, Krishna Sanghita. And I find it very interesting, without going into so many details about that, the, the look back at Kali, we'll give Kali as an example. Sometimes we may think that Bhaktivinoda Thakur is very innovative and he's giving something which is really, really different. But actually, if you look deep in the grammatical explanations of the different words, and, and in Shasha, in different Puranas like Brahma Vaivarta Purana and, and other Hadivangsa Purana, you'll see what, what Bhaktivinoda Thakur says is actually substantiated. 
in different ways. And for example, with Kaliya, he says that Kaliya Dhamman indicates Abhiman Kalata huh? Parakarita, someone who has this Abhiman, who's Kalata, who's very wicked, who uh, para parikarita, who wants to hurt other people, who's Prurita, who's very cruel. He's Jivi Doya Sunyata Durikarana. This is his explanation in Chaitanya Sikshamrita. He has no compassion. Huh? Durikarana means to uh, remove or, or become distant, like Binadrik in the third canto of the Bhagavatam, to be a separatist. It means that they're not thinking of, of Krishna's pleasure. They're not thinking the Lord's pleasure. They're thinking of themselves. So we may think, oh, this is Bhaktivinoda Thakur's far out explanation. But actually, if, if you contemplate on the word Kaliya, uh -huh. Kala has certain, several different meanings. Kala means something black. It means a kind of black poisonous snake. But it means night, it means iron. But another meaning of the word kala is to censor, to abuse, to criticize someone. And the suffix ia, uh, just like we have the word godia, uh, ia means to uh, belong to. So godia means someone who belongs to go to desh. That's a godia. So ia means some, in, in this particular kalia, means someone who possesses or has these particular qualities of censure, of criticism, which is exactly what, what Bhaktivinoda Thakur is speaking about. Mm -hmm. So this is the, uh, the Jamuna Hrid Roga. Kali is that heart disease mm -hmm. in, in the Jamuna. Therefore, he's a Bisha Jala. He's, he's poisoning that water. And then the gopis go on to mention the Gasura, which I, I found very interesting. Dubik Aga also means sin. And uh, I, I find this interesting, again, because the uh, cowherd boys, they were, they were involved with Agasura, and the gopis didn't even hear about it for one full year, we know, because of Brahma Mohan Alila. Uh, they didn't even hear about Krishna killing Aga. And I, this Agasura, again, is, is significant to me. I, I, I'm very much interested. I, I'm absorbed in thinking of this thing, both collective and individual, to continue with that theme with the Gasura, it's important because the boys, they went into the mouth of, of Agasura, and when they went in, initially they were by themselves and they died. But then later they again revisited that demon whose dead body was lying there with Krishna. And when they were visited with Krishna, it became like a playground for them. So I, I see someone recently. Uh, made a slideshow, which I was watching, some outside person from ISKCON, of all the different mutts here in Jagannath Puri. And it was like, he had like a hundred different photos of different, not temples, but mutts. Mutt meaning a place where sadhus come and they live. And I was very much struck that, that Puri, first of all, has so many different mutts. Practically every street has two or three mutts in it, where places where sadhus would come and live. But all these photographs, they were showing places which were decrepit, which were broken. There were no people staying in any of them. It, they were very lonely places. And it reminds me of Agasura in this way. And, and in this point that Jiva Goswami is making in this verse, how the gopis are seeing something in both an individual and a collective way. And in the case of Agasura, when the boys went in without Krishna, that mutta, Agasura in that sense is like a mutt, like a temple. And you may have a very, very big, wonderful temple, but as we see in the mutts here in Jagannath Puri, if Krishna is not present there, if the mud is just a place for money, for the place to try to accumulate some prestige or something, then what happens, the persons who go into that, that mutt, which uh, looks like a, a place of worship, which Agasura became for, with, with Krishna and the boys, when you go in there alone without Krishna, then it becomes a place of death. And all the boys, they died. But later on, then Krishna saved them. He brought them back to life. And later on, that same body of the demon became a playground for them with Krishna. So this, this I, I'm remembering both the Gasura and the temples, the mutts here, not the temples, but the mutts here in Jagannath Puri, how so many of them now that they're selling them off, that they're, 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 they're breaking them as one mutt they're breaking to make some... Uh, housing complex and things, because the, the Krishna wasn't kept in the center. So this, this is what I, I think about here with the word uh, uh, rakshasa, 
indicating agasura, that the gopis again are indicating something both individual and collective. That's an amazing realization, too. This, I mean, we had discussed this topic of individual and collective, but the way you explained this is beautiful. Thank you. Amar, if you want to add anything? Well, oh, absolutely. I'm I'm blown away by this explanation of Agasur. I've I've you know heard Agasur Leela from so many Vaishnavas, but I have never heard of Agasur Leela like this. <laughs> that it's actually a place of the boys were thinking it's a place of let's say upliftment or enjoyment, just like a jiva would think a temple is a place of spiritual upliftment and spiritual relish. But if you get there without Krishna as the focus, then it'll eat you up. It's so beautiful. Wow. And if Krishna is there with you, then uh, your spiritual life can be revived from the death. You can rise from the grave, as they say. The, 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 the friends rose from the grave as Krishna entered inside. And then that same temple of Agasur's body became actually a tirtha, became a, a place of visiting for so many and service to so many Vaishnavas. So wonderful. Um, it's 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 uh, very similar uh, to what happened in the Rasa Leela, when the when the gopis tried to run in front of Radharani <laughs> instead of behind her, they they tried to run in front of her. That I don't need Radha, I can try to find Krishna on my own. And then even if he comes Sundar, then he displays four hands and cheats us with his Vishnu Murti form. <laughs> but then those gopis who run and take shelter of Radharani's lotus feet, and they are. Anu Radhas. Anu means behind and Radha is Radha. So if they walk behind Radharani, then what happens is even in the form of Vishnu, the two hands melt in the form of Shamsundar manifests. So those who try to run in front of Radharani, that I will try to find Krishna on my own, then they will see Krishna as Vishnu. There's some transcendental trickery there. And then if we take shelter of Radha's lotus feet, then even in the form of Vishnu, the form of Krishna can manifest. So it's very interesting about keeping Krishna in the center and approaching Krishna through Sri Radharani. So it was, it was beautiful like that. My Guru Maharaj also gives a very interesting realization and practical example how to, how to understand the pastime of Aghasur. He mentions that the house of our do the, the, the door in our house, that's actually the open mouth, open gaping mouth of Aghasur. So we are living in this, in this house, that's Prindavan. But then the door on opening which we leave the house, we exit, that is actually the open mouth of Agasur. And what happens is when we leave our house and we go out, then automatically there is forgetfulness of Krishna. Our spiritual consciousness almost dies. So what did the boys do? Before they entered the mouth of Agasur, they were contemplating whether or not to enter this cave. But then one of the boys suggested, don't worry. The killer of Putana is there. So they all looked at the face of Krishna and said, just in case if something happens to us, you come and protect us. So Srila Guru Maharaj explains that before we leave the house in the morning, whether it's for school, whether it's for work, whether it's for any other chores, we should look at the face of our deity, who is Krishna, and tell Krishna that I am now going into the mouth of Aghasur, which means I am entering the open gaping mouth of Aghasur by opening the door of our house and getting into the Agasur body of the outside world. If I forget you, my Lord, and if my spiritual consciousness gets drained, now we look at the face of the deity just like the boys did and say that you come and protect me. Just like Krishna came, you came and entered the mouth of Agasur and protected your friends. It's your responsibility now. I am just doing what they did. They went into the mouth of Agasur, but they looked at your face. So I am also going to look at your lotus face, offer obeisances and go. So Guru Maharaj gives such a beautiful, wonderful practical analysis of Akasur. So that's, that's, uh, that's what comes to my mind at this point. Beautiful. Glance at Krishna. It's a very beautiful import that we should take the direction of Krishna every time we go. But this is specifically connecting with the pastime is wonderful. Now, I've been recently doing this. Uh, I've been teaching journaling recently. And one of the things I do is journaling as a form of praying. So when I have this Leela classes, often I tell the devotees that 
which part of the lila touches you the most note that down and see how you can incorporate that in your prayer life or how you can pray to krishna in the aspect that touches so we thinking of many cre- many ways in which devotees can do that but this is a beautiful precedent which is already mentioned by maharaj thank you for sharing that so beautiful madhan pro you want to add anything or move to the next one whatever you prefer yeah i i was just thinking this this phrase of brisha maya majat huh uh which is interesting and and our different the chairs have commented on this in different ways uh how the gopis they're mentioning aristasura and vyomasura but those demons hadn't been killed yet huh? mm-hmm. so how is it that, that they're saying that so it, balaba he says that the gopis because they're sarvagya they know past present and future huh? and they're not making any distinctions between them and and i find that kind of a significant point for devotees also sometimes we have this disease this mater- this empirical disease we try to understand spirit through the eyes of matter and we try to understand the bhagavatam in terms of mundane history and geography and it just doesn't work and there's going to be so many different headaches and so many different problems with it so th- this is valuable charges explanation Sanatan Goswami in Brihad Vaishnav Toshini he says that Brisha Mayatma Jat uh, that that you saved us from Arish and Vyoma sir it it hints at some future things uh but the gopis are mentioning them in like the past tense because the gopis they knew everything that indicating that this has happened in some previous yuga it's already gone on uh-huh. so this is an interesting point uh and uh was it i think vishnu chakravarti talk or jiva goswami speaks about this too that uh, the killing of yomasur was done in a previous time uh because they they'd heard about it vishnu says it because they'd heard about that from gargamuni and bhagari rishi therefore they're mentioning this thing they heard that this is going to happen but uh jiva goswami and sanatan goswami says that it already happened indicating that uh, this past time it happens again and again in little different ways in different yugas and the gopis they know that it's going to be coming so interesting point about this uh this phrase brishma yatma jat a oh, wonderful and i think something similar comes thank you bro uh, when narad muni also just before krishna leaves vrindavan and he comes and meets krishna and he says in the future i'll see you doing this past time and doing that past time and doing that past time so narad muni also knows he's also know, knows what is going to happen in the future of course we can say Nar- narad muni is more in the role of a sage so we think can think of him as a trikalagya or sarvagya but the gopis are more in the mood of coward boys but they're like coward girls but they are still like actually exalted devotees more than narad muni also actually if we connect us again with, with the kali adamana leela sanatan goswami says some interesting things to about the same point we're making how the past time happens in little different ways in brihad bhagavatamrita he says that that uh, although the gopis are just meeting krishna for the first time and that's one reason why it's such an important past time kali adamana leela krishna brings them onto the hoods of kaliya and they do a ras leela dance and then sanatan goswami in his commentary he explains that in different yugas this past time happens in little different ways and he gives him one example he says that sometimes krishna he puts a ring through kaliya's nose and he with one hand he he uh with his left hand he writes he, he's holding on to the this this cloth from from the uh wives of kaliya that they gave to him and he's writing he's writing kaliya like a horse in his other hand he's holding the flute and he goes to visit kongsa riding on kaliya which must have been a big surprise for kongsa so the past time happens in little different ways at different times sometimes jiva goswami mentions in one place that, that uh, in ram leela sometimes sita is not kidnapped by ravan sometimes she is sometimes she's not the past same past time is happening over and over again but in little different ways at different times so this brishmayatma jat is indicating it the gopis are seeing something either in in the future or in the past both ways amazing so it also brings us to the point that sometimes when we read a novel uh, it's all about the 
excitement of knowing what is going to happen next. And sometimes when people watch some movie and they, or read a novel and write a review, they say spoiler alert. It's like don't don't spoil the story by telling the story to me. <laughs> <laughs> But in Christian, so so there the fun is actually in knowing. And if you know who did the murder or who did this or who did that, then the whole fun is spoiled. But in Krishna Lila, it's different. It's not so much knowing as it's, it's like absorbing, relishing. So the relish comes not just from the plot twists. The relish comes from who are the characters involved. Like you could put another way. Sometimes, if people people love a particular story, even in the mundane sense, they want to watch it again and again. They want to hear it again and again. So, not to speak of it, it's all attractive, Lord. <laughs> so. So that's why Narad Muni is saying, "I know you're going to do these pastimes, and I'm going to look forward to them." So, similarly, the gopis they know the pastimes, but still, the excitement when when actually Vyamasur will come and Maya Dana will come, they still have that anxiety: what is going to happen now? So, the future knowledge of the future. In, so, one understanding is that that you have protected us in the past, and you will protect us in the future. So, how can you not protect us now? how why this inconsistency so the future example is given to highlight the inconsistency of krishna's behavior right now yes sir amarin also in this yeah yes yes prabhu ji actually also one acharya writes that apart from so vrusha mayatma jat apart from the gopis being all knowing apart from the gopis hearing about the birth chart of krishna by bhagori rishi and pournamasi devi and gargacharya that he will be killing the foretelling apart from the gopis knowing that in previous kalpas krishna has already done it when acharya also writes that uh, actually these two demons had already been killed by krishna in the same yuga they had, um, as far as arishtasur and vyomasur this pastimes were already done before the 31st chapter then the question could be then why shukadev goswami describing them after the ras panchadhyay he describes them in 34 35 36 mm. so the answer given is actually shukadev goswami wanted to describe vyomasur and arishtasur before the ras panchadhyay but what to do when he started describing the vatsalya leelas of krishna in chapter 8 9 10 11 then the heart was pulled towards the friendship pastimes then in 13 14 15 16 he was describing the sakya leelas and when he comes to chapter 21 which is venu geet purva rag the first meeting of radha and krishna then his heart was magnetized towards madhurya prem and he almost just uh, he, he was sliding towards the ras panchadhyay so although arishtasur and vyomasur had taken place before the gopi geet so the gopis are actually speaking what they had witnessed first time you know first hand but shukadev goswami did not describe that because of his excitement in speaking about the ras panchadhyay and after the ras panchadhyay was over then he was like okay now let me just go back and describe arishtasur and vyomasur i don't want to break the crumb or the chronology so he he one acharya writes that this actually happened before but then it was shukadev goswami's excitement and enthusiasm in speaking about the pastimes of krishna with the gopis that he almost forgot about these two demons and then he speaks about them later so but chronologically they happened before that's that's one perspective too yeah and that also to some extent uh, i think jiva goswami also talks about this in is in the sandarbhas so somewhere i have read that that also explains later on see see he says especially the the 10th canto past times are coming more out of spurti spontaneous recollection he is getting controlled by transcendental ecstasy and that's why chronology is left behind and mm-hmm. it's more of what you could say thought associations this past time reminds him of that past time starts speaking that and we see that especially in the post vrindavan leela also in the dwarka leela that he describes rukmini and then he immediately describes rukmini's children and then he goes to the other queens of krishna so in that sense the 10th canto is is actually a expression of shukadev goswami ecstasy and that's why chronology is sometimes neglected or overlooked mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and and also the thing is about you they, they're almost counting so many times you saved us just like uh, queen kunti 
Queen Kunti, in her prayers, she keeps a track of how many times and in how many ways Krishna saved her. Mm. She gives a, a whole list. And actually, there was no need of giving that list. But it gives a very important point to, for devotees to contemplate this spirit of gratitude. It's very important for us to think back in time and think, how many times was I actually saved and protected and helped by the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna? I don't want to use Krishna as a ladder to climb upon and get the fruit, the mango fruit of my material desires, and then just kick the ladder away. But I want to remember every single time I could have had an accident, I could have gone bankrupt, I could have been homeless, I could have been attacked, I could have been down with a certain disease, I could have been into a financial crisis, but thank God Krishna helped me through all of that. One doesn't have to publish a paper on that, but at least in one's personal diary, it's important to think back. So, so I, I really like it how His Grace Radhisham Prabhu coins it. He says a devotee must have four qualities. First quality, look back and thank Krishna. And the example for that is Kunti. Look back and thank Krishna. Mm. That's the first. Second, look ahead and trust Krishna. And that's Prahlad Maharaj. At every moment, he's looking ahead and trusting the protection of Krishna. So first is look back and thank Krishna. The example is Queen Kunti. Look ahead and trust Krishna. And the example is Prahlad. Look within and find Krishna. And that is Dhruva. <laughs> And at the same time, look around and serve Krishna. That is Srila Prabhupada. So a devotee <laughs> must have all four characteristics. <laughs> oh God. How to look back in gratitude, how to look ahead in trust, how to look within and find Krishna's presence, and how to look around and serve. So the gopis are doing that. Well, the chronology is being discussed, but then they're looking back and offering their gratitude that Krishna, you protected us so many times. You protected us from Kaliya. Vyala Rakshasa. Vyala means Agasur. It could also mean the snake who tried to swallow Nanda Maharaj. That's also Vyala. That's also the snake. So you protected us from Kaliya. You protected us from Agasur. And Rakshasa could be a separate term itself, meaning Bakasur and Putana, because they were Rakshasas. They were human flesh eaters. The word Rakshasa could go with Vyala as Agasur being the cannibal. Or it could mean Agasur and the cannibals. And the cannibals could refer to Bakasur and Putana. So we could have Kaliya, Agasur, Putana, Bakasur. All of them in the first line. And then in the second line, um, Vyala Rakshasad, Varsha Maruta. Varsha means rain. And Maruta means thunderstorm and breeze and wind. And Vaidyut means thunderbolt. And Anala means fire. And all four terms put together, they represent the Govardhan Leela. Because in the Govardhan Leela, there was a very harsh thunderstorm. There was rain. There was, you know, uh, it was almost like another Trinavarta there with the windstorm, uh, fire, thunderbolts. So they're putting all of that together as Govardhan Leela. Or you could even individually take it. Vai, uh, Vaidyut, uh, Anala could mean the two forest fires, which could be a separate discussion. Or it could be Trinavarta as the, as the wind demon. So if you take all the terms together, that refers to Govardhan Leela. And if you take them separately, then Varsha and Vaidyut refers to Govardhan Leela. But uh, um, Maruta refers to Trinavarta and Anala refers to the two forest fires. So that is also a consideration. So Krishna, you saved us from Kaliya. You saved us from Agasur. You saved us from Bakasur. You saved us from Putana. You saved us in the Govardhan Leela. You saved us from Trinavarta. You saved us from the two forest fires. And then Vrusha Mayatmaja. Vrusha could mean Arishthasur. And Mayatmaja is Vyomasur. But at the same time, the word Atmaja, when attached to the first term, which is Vrusha, that could mean, so it's interesting. Vrusha Mayatmaja. Vrusha means bull. And Mayatmaja means Vyomasur. The, the one who takes the air route. But at the same time, the word Atmaja, when it is attached to Vrusha, that means Vrushatmaja, that is another name for Vatsasur, who is the son of a bull. So the gopis are indicating Arishthasur by the word Vrusha. 
and mayatmaja refers to vyomasur but yet at the same time the word atmaja when taken with the term vrusha vrushatmaja that refers to vatsasur so they have counted kaliya they have counted uh, agasur they have counted bakasur putana govardhan leela trinavartha the two forest fires arishthasur vatsasur and vyomasur and then they say vishwato bhayat and how many more demons can we count you have saved us from all of them but now what's happening rushabhate vayam rakshita muhu it's very very interesting the father has has taken the child in the hand and helped him cross the road so many times imagine a father a child doesn't know to cross the road and the father holds him in his arm and helps him cross the road so many times that the child now develops faith in the father's protection and that same father takes the child and throws him under the wheels how does the child feel so the gopis are saying you have held our hand and taken us across the street of danger so many times and now that when we trust you you have thrown us under the bus and they start off with kaliya it's very interesting because for kaliya the situation is very similar to the gopis the gopis are devotees their husbands are not so kaliya's wives the nagapatnis are devotees but kaliya is not and what is krishna doing double standards the nagapatnis are not devote uh, are devotees and kaliya is not a devotee and what's krishna doing going into their house and giving darshan and here the gopis have left their house to, to come and see krishna and krishna still won't see them so these are some thoughts so krishna why why have these double standards mm mm-hmm. it's beautiful and there's so many aspects of this past time but how that past time relates to this when they remember kaliya it's amazing so yeah one of the themes i think the gopis later also talk about it when is it they list of how krishna you have always been a cheater not just in this avatar as vamana also you cheated as ram also they twist the story a little bit but the idea is that in love they speak like this so the idea is how can you be so inconsistent How, we, how can you abandon us like that yes so it's interesting madan do you want to say something yeah i i was just uh listening and and, and relishing so much so very very nice all these different points jiva goswami also says that the word brisha brisha means bull we have a brisha stamba in the temples of lord shiva like we have a garuda stamba in the temples of vishnu and krishna and that that vyoma because later he's going to become a bull <laughs> that uh, brisha is mentioned i i it's also significant as prabhuji was saying on the render that that uh, all so many different leelas are mentioned in this verse and the word anulat means from the fire and there's two fires that krishna saved the bridge basis from the first was in bandaravan in uh Krishna and then the second was uh, Munjata Munjavatavi where Krishna saved the boys first time we was all the bridge bossies together right after Kali Adamana Leela and the second time was just the boys and again I'm reminded of Bhaktivinoda you know, Thakur's comments about uh, the the past times he says that paraspara vidatma dava bhanya bhayankara that this forest fire indicates some uh Prospera vividatma, some quarrel amongst the different Vaishnavas, some pradayas. Huh? Uh, Bhakti Vinod comments and he says, Prospera Vaishnavas, some praday vivada rupa bhayankara dhavana la brajadam huh? raksarti bhagavan bhakshana korilena. The Bhakti Vinod Thakur is saying that that in this pastime, it represents division amongst the different Vaishnavas, some quarrel amongst different some pradayas. and when we say sampradaya it always strikes me strikes me that that devotees sometimes they think all oh, those those ramanuja guys or those vallabha guys and whatever and we've got our party but look in the uh, 13th chapter of the madhya leela of chaitanya charitamrita the word uh, sampradaya is used again and again and again to refer to the different associates of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu the 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 followers of nityananda prabhu the followers of bidway to charge or the followers of this devotee and that devotee and the, the word sampradaya is used again and again but someone may raise their hand and say excuse me but were the godiya sampradaya but 
uh, in that chapter, we can understand that Sampradaya doesn't just mean these four different Sampradayas, but Sampradaya means the followers of a particular Vaishnava, a particular person. So if we apply that understanding to Bhaktivinoda's explanation of the forest fires, then it means some separation amongst the Vaishnavas. And in particular, this past time, the gopis are mentioning, again, it is a collective sense, an individual sense, that collectively, this forest fire is threatening to separate all of the bridge bosses from you, Krishna. And, and individually, it's taking me away from you. Uh -huh. And the gopis, naturally, they want to... Uh, give pleasure to Krishna. In Chaitanya Sikshamrita, Bhaktivinoda you know, says, Davagni Nasa, it, it, this Davagni uh, Leela, it destroys Parasparavad, this conflict, Sampradaya Vidvesh, quarreling amongst different Sampradayas, this fighting is going on. And so Krishna came and he destroyed that. And again, this is collective and this is individual. Krishna in, in this Davagni Leela, when, with the boys, he told them that, that uh, the boys, they saw there's no way to escape, and then they all started crying out to Krishna and Balaram. And at that time, Krishna told them, close your eyes. And it's a very interesting point. The boys, they were thinking, oh, Krishna knows a mantra. Now, it, mantras are supposed to be secret. And so that's why he's telling us to close your eyes. But there's another reason, because previously Krishna had been eating mati on the bank of the Jamuna. He'd been eating dirt. And the boys, they went and told on Krishna and got him in trouble. And so Krishna was thinking to himself that, that if the boys see me swallowing fire, just like they saw me eating dirt before, and they told Mother Yashoda, maybe they're going to go and tell Mother Yashoda that I was eating fire, and then I'm going to really get in big trouble. So <laughs> that was the reason why Krishna told them to close their eyes. <laughs> That's beautiful. So many aspects to relish. So Prabhu's, I mean, we had planned till 12 o'clock, it's midnight for, and we're not even completed, we say, half of the verse. Do you want to go for half an hour and complete the verse, or should we continue next time? Sure, uh, Prabhu, we can, we, can, we can go a few more minutes uh, and then wrap up uh, the verse for this session. So, um, it's interesting, the word Rushabha has come at the end. We know the word Rushabha, like Rushabdev. Rushabha mm -hmm. means the best among men. So from the Dakshinya perspective, from the sub, more submissive rightist camp, you know, mm -hmm. we, can, we can say the right-wing gopis, from their perspective, Krishna, you are the best among men and you have protected us again and again. Please protect us even now. So that's the mood. Mm -hmm. However, from the, uh, the leftist camp, from the Vamya Bhav, the word Rushabha, means you were so strong at that time that you could defeat all these demons put together. Because the word Rishabha means hero, right? The best among men or a hero. Oh hero, oh best among men. You were showing off your strength so much by defeating all these above mentioned demons. Where are you now? You're not just a cowherd, you're also turning out to be a coward. <laughs> so, so Rushaba there is actually sarcasm that if you were really a hero a true gentleman is not someone he may or may not be able to fight the snakes and the bulls but definitely he will fight for the integrity of women definitely when women need him he will fight because to protect uh, women and children that's the nature of a gentleman but look at you hero you were so strong that you, you know, were showing off your strength against uh, calves and bulls and snakes and uh, whirlwinds and, and, and cranes and the vyoma, the bat, all of these different animals. But where are you now, oh hero, oh best among, oh best among men? Where are you now when the women are crying and weeping in the middle of the night? So you must certainly be Rishabha, you know, who can be better, you know, more... Uh, compassionate and so heroic like Krishna when, you know, when the, when the gopis need him the most, what, what are we supposed to do? Hide, right? That's how a hero behaves. That's what a hero wants to do, right? It's a total sarcasm from the Vamya camp, that Rushabha, <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of a hero are you? you know, what kind of a hero? Apart from that, the word Rushabha also means a bull. Just like the word Vrusha means bull, the word Rushabha also means a bull. 
And the bull is a signifactor of dharma. So it's almost throwing a javelin into the heart of Krishna that you are the bull. And bull means dharma. And look, now the greatest adharma is being performed by dharma personifies. <laughs> he who is bull, bull meaning dharma. And, and here the greatest adharma is happening. All the gopis are made to, you know, be, cry homeless on the banks of the Jamuna. So you certainly must be that same bull who represents dharma. You know, who, who, who's protecting dharma <laughs> by creating the greatest adharma here. Also, another perspective is why Krishna is called bull here? Because there is a say, phrase in Sanskrit, dharmo rakshati rakshitaha. That dharma protects those who protect dharma. Oh Krishna, you are dharma. You are the bull. Bull means dharma. And we have protected you so many times. How do you think all these demons you conquered? You didn't conquer. You're Yashoda Nandan. You're Lala. What power do you have to conquer Kaliya and Agasur and Bakasur and oh, you know holding Giriraj? You did not do it, Baba. We did it. We prayed for you. We prayed to Narayan. We prayed to Shaligram Shila to give you power. And Dharma Rakshati Rakshitaha, the principle is Dharma protects those who protect Dharma. And you are the bull, Rishabha. And bull means Dharma. And we have protected Dharma so many times in the above mentioned examples. But alas, 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 alas. We protected Dharma, but Dharma could not protect us today, even once. We protected you so many times. When Putana came, you were six days old. What power did you have? We were praying. We were praying for you. So we protected Dharma. <laughs> you are the bull. Bull represents Dharma. That's Rishabha here. So we have protected Dharma so many times. And Dharma has to protect us. But we protect. And Muhuhu. Rakshita Muhuhu. So instead of saying you protected us so many times. This, the, the flip story, there's a twist, plot twist at the end of the story that we protected you so many times, but you can't protect us even once. Not even once. Another perspective to the uh, Rishabha word, Rishabha means bull. Look at your double standard in your behavior, double standards. When one woman in the form of Bhumi Devi became a cow, then you appeared in this world just to relieve her pain. So <laughs> when one cow cries, Bhumi Devi, the bull is ready to come and protect her. But when so many cow-like protect cow -like gopis are crying, the bull is hiding. <laughs> when Bhumi Devi became a, a cow and she needed help, then at that time this bull called Krishna, he appeared. Seeing the tears of one cow, Bhumi Devi. Now all the cowherd men, uh, cowherd women in the form of the gopis who are softer than the cows. <laughs> we are all crying. But Gopal, the protector of cows. Govind, the pleasure giver of the cows. And ultimately Dharma, the bull. He's hiding. Wow, look at the best among men. He certainly must be the hero. Look at his double standards. So that, that sarcasm is invoked here from the Vami Bhav. Amazing. In this reading of the Gopi Gita from the two bhavas, Vama and Akshay, that opens a whole new, new universe of how everything can be appreciated and relished. Thank you. Yeah. Madhavanantra, anything you would like to share? Mm. I was just appreciating that the verse also speaks about um, how Krishna is like Cupid, how he's like Kamadev. And the gopis... Okay. They they're they're saying that that uh, that you're you're shooting the, these arrows at us. Uh -huh. uh, Jiva Goswami, I think, in his commentary mentions this. And Krishna has different arrows because Krishna, you're trying to kill us. You're trying to kill us with your glance, and that glance means the, these different five arrows that Cupid has, which uh, they're describing Gita Govinda as Samohanak Shobhanascha. That when someone becomes agitated, when someone is burning, that they become their mouths become dry and they become ruined. These are the five different uh, bewildered, agitated, burning, drying, and ruined. These are the five different eras of Cupid. Cupid also uh, he has this bow which is compared his his arrows 
are different types of flowers, the red lotus, a shoke flower, a mango flower, uh, a type of jasmine, and a blue flower. And there's a line, there's a string on his bow, which is a line of bees. So the gopis, they're saying that you're shooting his arrows at us from the arrows of Cupid, and we're becoming stunned. We're, we're burning, we're drying up, we're dying in separation from you. You're killing us. So the, the gopis are complaining in this way about Krishna. So glad I had. Sure, sure, Prabhuji. It's uh, the, the, the thought of the gopis is almost like they're, they're telling Krishna, it's almost like a conversation. Krishna, uh, think about a gardener, someone who likes gardening, someone who likes flowers. Think about a gardener who, uh, who sows the seed and you know, plants. He takes care of plants, saplings that he has himself taken care of. And he protects his, his own nursery. He protects his own plants. He protects them with proper... Um, you know, let's say fencing, he protects from the weeds, he protects them from the goat, he protects from everything. So Krishna, you are like that. We are your plant and you are our gardener. You have protected us from so many demons. You have protected us from Putana. You've protected us from Agasur. You've protected us from Kaliya. You've protected us in the Govardhan Leela. So we are like plants and you have fenced properly. And you've protected us. You have uprooted all the weeds in the form of the demons. But then think about the gardener. Uh, think about the plant. If the plant develops so much love towards the gardener that he always protects me. And one fine day, the gardener just goes crazy and he just uproots his own plant and just throws it in the trash. The, the plant thinks, what did you even do? If you had to trash us, if you wanted to reject and uproot us, why did you even protect us in the first place so many times? So we gopis, we are like plants and you are our gardener. You protected us so many times. And now, alas, 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 when the, the plant gets so attached to the gardener, the gardener just uproots without a second thought. So Krishna responds to that. Wait a minute. You are saying I uprooted? What was my, you know, where did I uproot? The gopi said, you left us in the Rasa Leela. Krishna said, I left because all of you were proud. You were proud. It's whose fault is that? It's not my fault. <laughs> you are blaming it on the gardener that I uprooted the plants of your lives. But no, I left because you were proud. And the gopis have a fantastic response to that. Dosha karo pi kuti lo pi kalanki to pi mitra vasana samaye vihito da yo pi chandrastatha pi girisha shirasa vibharati naiva shrite shuguna dosha vicharanasya. The gopis say, Krishna, you are saying that you left us because we were proud. We want to throw the arrow of this verse at you. And what is that? Think about the moon. How many faults does the moon have? The moon comes from the churning of the milk ocean. And what else came from the churning of the milk ocean? Poison. So who is the brother of the moon? Poison, because they appeared from the same womb, the milk ocean. <laughs> so the, the moon has a, a, a fault. What is that? He is born with poison. right? Poison also appeared and Lord Shiva had to drink the poison. So, so in the same milk ocean that from where poison came, the moon also appeared. So the gopis are saying that the moon has their sibling in the form of poison. We don't have, we don't have our brothers and sisters as poison. Point number one. Point number two, the moon increases and decreases in size. But however, our love doesn't increase and decrease conditionally for you. It's unconditional. Point number three, the moon has spots. However, our love doesn't have any spots. So they give a list of reasons. They say, look at the moon. It, has, it, it appears from the same source as poison. It increases and decreases in size. It has dark spots on its face. And the sun doesn't like to see the face of the moon. As soon as the moon is rising, the sun prefers to set. <laughs> the gopis are saying these flaws are there with the moon. But learn something from Lord Shiva, oh Krishna. Learn something from Lord Shiva. Irrespective of all these flaws with the moon, Lord Shiva still keeps the moon on his head. Isn't that how saintly devotees should behave and not see the faults in others? 
if the moon has so many faults and Lord Shiva still keeps it on the head, we don't have any of these faults and you reject us? Are you saying you're going to reject us? Another question, Krishna. If the son is disobedient, does the father reject him? Think about us. We are from the same village as you. We are from the same family of cowherd men as you. And we are your lovers. We are ready to reject the whole world and come to you. And you're still hiding because we were proud. Try to learn something from Lord Shiva. And keep the, the moon of our hearts on the top of your head. Do that. And if you finally, if you want to uh, be consistent in your behavior, then please be consistent. <laughs> what is the consistency? When you attacked Aghasur, what did you do to him? You sent him to his family. What is the family? Putana got liberated. Bakasur got liberated. And then what did you do to Aghasur? You sent him in the same state of liberation. You sent Aghasur to his family. That is Putana and Bakasur who were already liberated. So if you really want to behave properly and you want to punish us, you punish the demons. How did you punish the demons? You gave all of them liberation. You gave Kaliya the greatest position of liberation. You gave Putana liberation. You gave Vatsasur liberation. For Arishthasur, you made a pond and called it Radhakund. So if you want to punish us, then why don't you punish us like you punish them? How did you punish them? You sent Agasur to his family, to Bakasur and Putana, who are already liberated. So if you want to punish us, send us to our family. And who is our family? It's you. So if you really want to punish us, then you send us to, your, to our eternal family, and that is you. We have left all our family members behind. We don't know anyone else in this world. If you want to punish us like the way you punished Agasur, you sent Agasur to Bakasur and Putana in the state of liberation, his brother and sister. Please send us also. Punish us. Yes, please punish us. But punish us in a way that you send us to our family. And our family is you. So please give us darshan. Please reveal yourself to us. So then Krishna has nothing else to say. <laughs> to this. Amazing comparison with the moon. This pride thing comes a much, uh, I think pride theme comes again in the later verse when they say that you are Nijajanas Maya Dhamsanas with. We we'll discuss that again at that time also. Madhantru, you want to add anything? Yeah, I, I was just thinking about the, the nice analogy of the gardener and some other Vaishnavas I'd heard, they, they were commenting that the nature of a gardener is he has attachment and protection. He shows protection for the things that he grows. But sometimes in a garden, there's certain plants which are, as some people may say, why are you growing that for? That, that plant is poisonous. That plant has so many thorns. That plant has so many faults. But because the gardener has taken care of it and nourished it, he feels some sympathy for that plant. And although other people are advising him maybe to cut it down and, and get rid of it, he won't do it. In a similar way, sometimes a, a sadhu has people who come to him and they may have different faults, but uh, still he feels sympathy and love for them. The Srila Prabhupada had so many disciples and some of them had problems, but they were very close to his heart because they came and they took shelter of him. So the gopis, in, in this sense, it was reminding me of this principle of, of, uh, of, of preaching and also of the uh, gardener. I'm also struck, a, a point comes to my mind when we discuss all this, that someone may be thinking that the gopis, they're uh, selfish in that, that they, they want to see Krishna. And if we think like that, that's uh, indicative of our own short consciousness, our own limited consciousness. We should understand that when the gopis look at Krishna, their look at Krishna is to please him. In the, uh, for example, in, in Chaitanya Chaitamrita, in Adilu chapter 4, it's described that gopi, prekshana kepchepi, bhaspa, pura bifarshanam, uchar anandad, anandam arindavilochana. It's a verse also from Bhakti Rasamita Sindhu, that Radharani, she was looking at Krishna, and some tears came, and she couldn't see Krishna because of those tears, and she became upset, and she started criticizing. See, aninda means she's doing ninda. She's criticizing those uh, tears which came to her. So we should understand that when the gopis want to see Krishna, 
it's not just that, that they want to have a good time. Like we, we want to go, sometimes devotees go to Mayapur. It's like going to the circus. And while what's going on tonight, oh, there, there's a drama going on. But at the same time, there's this other music program going on. I'm not sure which I'm going to go to. And then there's this great pizza parlor. And <laughs> to draw people into Krishna consciousness, we sometimes present a, a, a variety of different pleasures for them. And sometimes, therefore, we think that, that seeing the deity or seeing Krishna is something from my pleasure. And we might think that, that Krishna, that the gopis, they have some selfishness. They want to see Krishna for their own pleasure. But a nice example is given that just when a young girl looks at a young boy, that glance of the young girl gives so much pleasure to the boy. Or it's opposite, when a, boy, a young boy is looking at a girl in a loving kind of a lusty kind of way, the girl, she gets some pleasure from that. So Krishna, he gets pleasure from the glances of the gopis. And the gopis, they know that. So their, their desire to see Krishna, they want to see him because we want to give you the best pleasure. And what are you doing? You're going, you're staying in Mathura, and you have these Mathura ladies there, you have this Kubja there. They're not going to give you sufficient pleasure. You should have our glance. Ah, nice verse to support that also. It's amazing. So, the, so yes, Madhavan, sorry, Madhavan, I mean, we want to add something concluding at this stage or any, of course, you have a lot to speak, but about this verse? There's a saying that we should end with the sweet. So Sripad Madhavananda Prabhu's word should be the end. Oh, <laughs> so I will not add or say anything. And then it gets sweeter with His Grace Chaitanya Charan Prabhu's summary of the whole discussion. So Sripad Madhavananda Prabhu and myself, we are very eagerly sitting on the edge of our seat. No, to today, I guess the... I'll... <laughs> today I guess I have to disappoint you. It was just too much for me, for all that was discussed in the sense that, see, it's uh, almost every example was a point in itself. And every explanation of the verse was a point in itself. Every explanation of each section of the verse was a point in itself. So it's going to be, yes, there's so many points, I don't know which to summarize and which to leave out in the summary. It was not so much like uh, themes in which you can classify the points. But just one point after another point, each equally relationship. With some broad overview, if I want to take, we discussed this verse, and before that, we discussed a part of the previous verse. So, Suratanathate, beautiful meanings from the Vami and Dakshina perspective that <clears throat> Suratanath can, of course, at one level refer to Krishna as the god of love, but it can also refer to the one who torments those who are absorbed in him, also one refer to one at you, it is you who begged us to come. And Ashul Kadasik also, you give two meanings like that. That we came out of love, that's the normal meaning. But the, the only shulka we ask you is your glance, but you're not giving that to us. So we did that concluded, concluded verse. And in this verse, there are many themes we discussed, especially elaborate discussion of Vichajala, Pyayad, and how Krish, among the various demons, Krishna is the demon whom he didn't, sorry, Kali, among the various demons who came, Kalia is the demon whom he didn't kill. But at the same time, did he abandon Kalia when he told him to go away? Now you discuss how, where Kaliya went, there is a discussion of, he is discussing Krishna Katha, Garuda may also come there and here. So, Kaliya he didn't kill because in some ways Kaliya and Krishna are similar, they are like both param, they are also both have, param, they, are, they are paramours to someone, Kaliya is with Yamuna, who is Krishna's wife, so Krishna didn't want to destroy his uh, bhava. <laughs> <laughs> and then, Krishna, you all, that also that Kaliya, you went and gave darshan to Kaliya's wives. <clears throat> By going there, we have come here to you, but you are not. You are taking away the our darshan of you. So how can you be so unfair to us? As we say, Jalapya Yad, Vyala Rakshasat can mean two different words. It can mean it can be Aghasur and Rakshasa, various Rakshasas, or it can be Aghasur, the demon also, and Aghasur, the cannibal. The beautiful explanation of how the without the without Krishna's presence, the playground becomes dangerous. Agasura was the playground which became dangerous. The Gopas went inside without him. But when they after Agasura was killed, then that same playground was relishable for him. So for us, 
Now, if we we don't have Krishna with us, then wherever we go, it can be dangerous. But with Krishna, even the dangerous places of this world can be beautiful. So, like the Sagopas had a glance at Krishna before they went inside. So similarly, so that that because of that, Krishna's protection was there for them. Like that Krishna always. So before we go out into the world, which is like you know, which is like a ghasa, sorry, not a ghasa, yeah, a ghasa. So before we get swallowed by it, if we get swallowed, Krishna will come and protect us, rescue us, as he did for us, Gopas. Then uh, also this collective and individual was amazing that the gopis. Each of the gopis is praying herself, but when they are referring to collective, it's not just other gopis; it's all of Rindavan. Other Rajivasis also they are referring to, and then say you protected us. So the future. So is it that they are describing future demons who will come in future? That is one way because they they are they are saintly people. They are sarvagya, trikalagya, and they know what is going to happen in the future. That's one explanation. The other is that Shukde Goswami is so ecstatic that he is speaking more with based on. Spontaneous recollection and thought association there in chronology, and these two demons, Yamasur and Arishtasur, came earlier, but they are described later in the Bhagavatam. And that amazing description of Prasha Maya Atma Jad, that various meanings associated with the word bull. That, um, the bull comes to protect the cows; they are in danger. But here we are, so many like cows, but you are not protecting us. And there are, I think, three, four different other meanings. You could go into. I don't want to make this summary infinitely long now. And uh, then, my Rishi Mayat Majad. The Rishi Bhatte. Sorry, that was about Rishi Bhatte. I mean, Rakshita Amu. So in this way, you protected us in the past. You protect us in the future. But why are you not protecting us now? So did we actually discuss Rishi Varsha Marutad Vajin Thanalat? Or that we'll discuss in some other words? The Govardhan Lila itself is a huge subject to discuss. Yeah. Yeah. Any other major? I know there are many points you discussed. Any other major points if I left out, you want to quickly mention? You can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I like Sri Pad Madhavan and the Prabhu's point about the forest fire, oh, the two yeah. forest fires. That's my amazing. Yes, true. Yeah, but but somehow the best point that I'm 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 not. I hope I never forget the point about Aghasur. I really love that from. Shri Pad Madhavan and the Pro. I I never ever ever heard that. It's so beautiful. If you try to enter there for for your personal gain and you don't have Krishna, then your spiritual life will be swallowed. Such a beautiful point, and um, I really liked it. It's uh, very relishable. We've seen that all of us in in different temples. Sometimes, if we have devotees who are doing service. But they're not keeping with Krishna. Then what happens? Then they may spiritually die. They go away. And I, the vivid example I find is here in Jagannath Puri. There's so many different mutts. We started to, as a place to come together and hear and chant, but it became just some place to make money, some place to come together for some other activity. And Krishna wasn't there. Then everything dies. It's a very very important lesson for all of us. So, the best way we can serve Srila Prabhupada is to keep Krishna in the center. And I have a very nice last comment. Prabhupada went to the GBC meeting once, and this is our, our favorite saying. Prabhupada told them, he said, he came in there having this big management meeting. Prabhupada told them, this chanting should go on. Instead of meetings, resolutions, dissolutions, revolutions, and no solutions, there should be chanting. <laughs> this is Srila Prabhupada's movement, and we will keep Krishna yeah. in the center always, then everything will be okay, everything will all be protected. Mm. I'm, I'm also remembering His Holiness Mahavishnu Goswami Maharaj, disciple, beloved uh, follower of Srila Prabhupada, I think disciple of Shivram Swami Maharaj, if I'm not wrong, right, from Rajkot. Um, a very, very great soul. So, um, Maharaj used to say, uh, and I heard this from His Grace Gauranga Prabhu, that Maharaj, when he came to Radha Gopina Temple many, many years ago, he told all the brahmacharis that all of you should get married. And then they were all like shocked. Maharaj, <laughs> said, all, Maharaj said, all of you should get married to Srimad Bhagavatam. <laughs> and, 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 then, and then Maharaj said that he told all the brahmacharis, 
If you don't read Srimad Bhagavatam, if you don't read Srila Prabhupada's books every day, then the walls of the ashram will eat you up. <laughs> it's a very interesting phrase. Amazing. <laughs> and even, even Shruta Kirti Prabhu in his What's the Difficulty, very nice book of his pastimes, Recollections of Srila Prabhupada. He mentions that one day Srila Prabhupada, it was about uh, 5.30 in the morning, 1972, Karthik, Brindavan. And Srila Prabhupada asked Shruta Kirti Prabhu, he named two of his disciples and he said, uh, where are they? And Shruta Kirti Prabhu said, they're sleeping. <laughs> 5.30 in the morning. So Srila Prabhupada said, go and tell them that I am calling. So then they like, <laughs> they woke up. Srila Prabhupada wants to see you. So they just rushed into the room, offered obeisances. Prabhupada said, what are you doing? Oh, we were sleeping, Prabhupada. And then Prabhupada paused and he said, if you chant your 16 rounds attentively, you wake up early in the morning and take a cold water bath. It's a very interesting point, cold water bath. <laughs> Prabhupada said, if you take a cold water bath, chant your 16 rounds, follow four regulative principles, and minimize your eating and sleeping. And then Prabhupada said, if you do this for 12 years, whatever you speak will come out true. Whatever you speak will be perfect. <laughs> it was like wak siddhi. Mm -hmm. So it's a, again in, in line with if we incorporate hearing, chanting, remembering, then we will be spiritually nourished. It's like the food for the soul then we'll not be eaten up. That's, that's the point. Yes, amazing. So thank you very much. This has been a wonderful discussion. Thank you, Madhavantu. Thank you, Amarendra Prabhu. Look forward to continuing next week. Thank you. Thank you, Chaitanya Charan Prabhu, for having us. I'm grateful to you. Thank you. Thank you, Shripad Madhavananda Prabhu and Krishna Kunda Mataji. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for thank you for sharing your affection and such deep, deep realizations. <laughs>